Hey guys, today we're going to be looking at the Grand Seiko SBGA413, otherwise known as the Grand Seiko Seasons Collection Spring Model. Alright, let's get to it. So just like the other Grand Seiko models, you get this nice, uh, almost like a faux leather Grand Seiko outer box, which houses the watch box. Inside you get this very nice Japanese rice paper, very thick and it has a pattern on it, really cool. So inside the box you get the Grand Seiko Spring Drive Operating Instructions Book. Pretty thick booklet, it's for the 9R caliber. And this is a US based model so you get the limited warranty. So you get a paper based limited warranty. As opposed to the nice metal and plastic ones you get in the JDM models. It's still pretty nice, you get a little booklet. And underneath all of that nice rice paper is the Grand Seiko leather box. And I love the Grand Seiko box, it's so classy, so elegant and pretty simple at the same time. You have this nice blue leather at top. Feels really nice too. And it's wrapped all around the entire box. Inside the box, you have a nice Grand Seiko emblem up there, padded cushion up here. This random cloth, which I still have no idea what honestly meant for. And it comes in this little pouch cloth thing. So it's like a cleaning cloth and a pouch, I'm not sure. And there's the watch, ladies and gentlemen, stunning. Let's get all this plastic off. All right guys, and there's the watch. And this thing is beautiful, wow. This thing is amazing, guys. I can't really put into words how beautiful this thing looks in real life. I mean, it's really a thing of beauty. It's really a marvel in the watchmaking world, I gotta admit. So this is the SBGA413. Retails for right there, it's a 6300. That is how much I paid for this. And I gotta say, when you see this thing in the metal versus pictures online, it honestly makes such a huge difference. It just looks so stunning. It's it's more than what words can describe, let's put it that way. This watch is a long time coming for me. I waited to get my hands on this for a very long time. I put myself on the wait list to get one of these and it took months and months and it finally, I got the call. Felt kind of like the Rolex sports models where, you know, the AD hits you up and they let you know that your watch is ready to be picked up and it's the most exciting feeling ever and that's kind of how it was with this for me as well. I waited a couple months to get this one. I put my deposit down, I patiently waited and after a couple months of waiting, I got the call and it was just an amazing feeling to finally get that call. Such a relief to finally see it and be impressed with it in the metal. What I was initially afraid of was that I was gonna put my deposit and order something which I've never seen in real life and then it comes in and I'm disappointed that it doesn't live up to expectations versus the pictures that you see online. And after seeing it in the metal, I can tell you that the finishing on this dial, the case, everything. So this watch is made out of titanium, but it's so solid feeling compared to the steel of other watches even. And it doesn't even feel like, you know, the cheap titanium that you guys are accustomed to on lower end Seiko and Citizen watches. This one honestly feels like it's more solid and harder than steel, which I know titanium is technically harder than steel, but because of the weight of titanium, you never feel like it's that solid, but this one honestly feels more solid than my steel watches, which is honestly really saying something. And let's just take a moment to look at that dial. Beautiful. If you look closely, it almost looks like strokes from a paintbrush or clouds even, even though I know it's supposed to simulate falling cherry blossom petals. And the way they described it was that it's the spring season, the early cherry blossom uh, petals that fall into the lake or body of water and they reflect light and it's supposed to give off that color. So it's not supposed to be a dark pink and it's not really supposed to be white either. It's supposed to be kind of like an in-between color and that's exactly what you get here. At times it looks pink, at other times it looks silver, sometimes you even get kind of a white or a sand beige-ish color, but it's just stunning guys. I don't know what else to say. It sometimes even looks like an ice white, like a polar effect almost, but nonetheless very beautiful. And then you get a look at that spring drive movement, and there is nothing in the world that is as smooth as that second hand right now. Just beautiful. And you can see the power reserve indicator right there showing that I have about halfway power and I believe this is supposed to last for about 72 hours. I read online that some people are getting 90 hours out of these. I don't know if that's true or not, but they're rated to get 72 hours, which is still an amazing power reserve. And you can see that case finishing. The case finishing is amazing as well. It goes from like a brush to a polished surface. And the way that they did it with titanium, and this is their super hard titanium, which is more resistant to scratches and I mean, it almost looks like steel or even white gold. It's a really amazing metal to see in the flesh. 
the brush surfaces look like they could be a samurai sword or something of the like. And the bracelet is really nice. At first, uh, I was thinking of just swapping out the bracelet, but seeing it in the flesh, this titanium, the work they did on this looks really nice. And it's like a very sporty, elegant look. I really like it. You see that box sapphire crystal right there? It looks amazing. I love that. It kind of gives it a vintage feel without being a vintage watch. That's kind of the whole premise of these watches. So this watch falls under the Heritage line of Grand Seiko. As you guys know, there is the Elegance line, which is mostly leather strap watches that appeal to the more dressier vibe. They're, you could say dress watches and the like. Then there's the Sport line, which is all professional sports and divers, chronographs, pilot watches, etc. And then there's the Heritage line, which takes the previous Grand Seiko models that were from the 60s and 70s, and they're early on. So they basically make new versions of those previous case shapes. Each watch, like for example, there's a Snowflake, which is based on the 44 GS, or this watch, which I believe is a 62 GS case. And each one is kind of like a re-edition of those classic models, which I think is really amazing because you're getting that same exact vintage uh, case shape, the same vintage box sapphire crystal, and you're getting like a new modern take or modern twist on it, which is really cool. So those models have always been found on leather straps and these newer ones that Grand Seiko's making for older heritage line are coming on bracelets. So they gotta stay modern with the times, they gotta give the people what they want, and that's kind of where this design came from, which I think is really cool when you look at it that way. So it's kind of like a vintage piece coming back to life with a modern twist. Still keeping that exact case shape, there's no alter there, and the same Dauphine hands, which look amazing, and the minute markers, etc. So it's just like throwing on a new dial and a new bracelet, but at the same time, Increasing the size a couple millimeters and just increasing the finishing level and adding new materials such as this titanium. And this does have a signed crown. You can see the GS logo right there. Really nice crown. Feels very nice compared to my other Seikos. I really like that. And I just can't get enough of this dial. I mean, the way it plays with the light. So cool. So on the titanium bracelet, you do get that GS signed clasp, which looks really cool. Very classy feel. Now I'm going to show you guys the crown jewel of it all, which is that beautiful spring drive movement. And it is just finished beautifully, exceptionally well. It looks like something that belongs on a much higher tier watch. I've seen Rolex movements, I've seen Omega, I've seen pretty much all the movements in this price range. And I'll admit, this 9R65 looks so beautiful compared to them. And on the back you do get that Grand Seiko symbol in the middle. On the older watches, it used to be a gold medallion. So on this one, to, in order to have a see-through display case back, they made like a kind of see-through logo. Uh, a lot of people are kind of against that. They say it blocks the movement, but I can see the movement just fine under this. And I think it looks kind of cool. It's still another like vintage touch that gives this watch a little more charm. And I really like that. And the finishing on this movement, I can't explain how nice it is. It's so shiny, so many lines, just remarkably done. This really tells you that Seiko is able to make watches, which are on a much higher tier than the typical Seiko 5 divers. It's just amazing. All right, let's get it on wrist and see how it looks. All right, guys, on wrist, exactly how you'd imagine. Fits beautifully. This is 40 millimeters across, a little over 12 millimeters in thickness. So you don't feel like it's too tall and the titanium makes it feel a lot lower to your wrist than it actually is. And you can kind of see most of the thickness is from that that beautiful box crystal, but it's totally worth it because the looks of this watch are just stunning. And this watch just feels so right at home on my wrist. I gotta admit guys, this is probably the most beautiful watch I've seen to date. And on the dial, you can see the GS logo on this one is gold and the Grand Seiko lettering underneath is printed in black. The logo is applied, but the lettering is printed underneath. The same as the black spring drive font at the bottom there. I believe for some of their models, they chose to go with the gold and black versus the old silver look to kind of give it a more special feel. I think when they first designed this watch, they were planning on making it a limited edition, but then chose to kind of keep it sticking around because of how well it was doing. And that framed date window just adds a little bit more elegance to an already beautiful, elegant watch. Just amazing. And if you look closely, you can see the hands, which are done so beautifully. Not only are they brushed, but they're also polished around the edges and those sharp minute markers, which are polished so beautifully. It's, you can see every little detail on them. Kind of reminds you of the hands on the King Seiko, but you can tell that this is just one step even further above in the hierarchy of finishing on this thing. And the chapter ring, of course, on a Grand Seiko, as you'd expect, perfectly lined up. 
no alignment issues on this one, but just beautiful. So because of the K shape and the bracelet, it doesn't make you feel like you're wearing a watch that has a dial that's too big as opposed to the other more dressy watches or the dressy style Grand Seiko watches. This one has a very almost, you could say, a slight sporty edge to it. It almost feels like the Patek Nautilus and the Royal Oak AP in the sense that it's a dressy watch that's trying to be sporty or comes off as a little sporty, even though it's not a hardcore sports watch or a professional watch like a Submariner or a Diver or a Chronograph. This one is kind of like that in-between, I would put it in that category, but honestly I think this looks a lot better than pretty much anything out there on the market right now. Just stunning. And I'm definitely going to say that this is something that I could see as being a daily wearer and it would definitely replace the current blue Hodinkee GMT, the SBGM 239 that I currently have. That one is probably on the chopping block now because this thing just looks so stunning compared to that. It honestly makes that watch pale in comparison when you try to even compare the dial work. You get that spring drive movement, the titanium case, which feels so high end, even better than the steel, the beautiful bracelet, the dial. I mean, everything on this watch is just a complete package. If you're trying to buy a first nice high-end watch, I would definitely recommend this one. It's really a thing of beauty and it's really something that will get your feet wet into higher-end watches and leave you with a good taste in your mouth afterward. So what do you guys think of this watch? Let me know in the comments below. Alright, see you guys next time.